But what I've been thinking about as I listen to all of the sessions that we've had today is that um, working with OER from a library's perspective, um, to me, it makes the most sense that each institution understands the climate on their, at their campus and also the needs of their community. And the way that you do that is by going out and asking questions and building relationships. And so, um, in a, so I think that a lot of the talk that I've heard today is really about relationship building and through those relationships, understanding what the needs are on your campus. And then I think libraries have the opportunity to create kind of a customized OER, Open Educational Resources Program support services on their campus um, that make the most sense for the needs on their campus and that will can be the most successful. So everybody's doing a variety of things, but the things that are successful in one place might not be successful somewhere else. And so am um, I thinking about the work that I'm doing and that that work is really focused based on my institution and it's slightly different than some of the work that's happening in other places. So there's publishing of open educational resources that's going on at some institutions. There is um, support for adoptions of either open textbooks or open educational resources on these at, in, at these institutions. Um, there's awareness raising about open educational resources happening at a lot of these institutions. Um, but in order for any of those programs to be successful, you have to understand how to go about it in a way that is responsive to the needs of your particular institution and the climate that exists there. So so I guess the biggest thing that I think about from my perspective, just being into, in this game for about two years now, is that you don't have to do everything at once. Mm -hmm. So um, I always tell the story about how my youngest son had a buddy in preschool whose mom was a public health nurse. And she talked to me one time about how there was a large change that they were looking at making in public health related to smoking in the United States. And the way that they approached it was they were looking at what impact they could have in 10 years, not this year or the next year. And so that kind of, uh, have, having gone from being a young librarian at one point in time to not the youngest librarian anymore, um, I used to be very impatient about getting everything done now. So I think with OER, knowing that OER has been around already for a long time, but in the US there's certain pressures now that make it um, a good option for people to consider. Um, so my end game is not this year or the next year. Yes, I think about what do I want to be doing oh, this year and the next year, but my end game, I'm not focused on, oh, I'm not doing enough now. What I'm focused on is what impact can we have in 10 years? Mm -hmm. So it's like, don't think that you're not doing enough now. Do something now. Plant seeds, get started, and keep building on that from year to year, and think about your end game in 10 years or 20 years or like what you're, what you're building on. So. So the work that we have done that has been successful is really focusing on the low-hanging fruit, so to speak. So um, we, um, I'm working with David Ernst, who's in the College of Education and Human Development at the University of Minnesota, and he um, explored what the barriers were to faculty adopting open textbooks and came up with a programmatic approach to overcoming some of those barriers. So using his programmatic approach, we reached out to faculty on our campus, and what we've done is we've let them self-identify. So we sent out kind of a mass email, um, you know, so we've got thousands of faculty, but we've got a response from a core of 50 faculty who have an interest. And so we're not trying to change the opinions of people who aren't interested or who think this isn't a good idea. But what we're trying to do is build a core of people who are interested and can figure out, and, and they are kind of that, they lay the groundwork, okay. and, they're the, and they're the people, like if you can build some successes with them, then they're the people who can go out and spread the word in their departments about what they learned. Um, or they can invite us in to talk to other people in their department and demonstrate what they've learned. So, um, so it's kind of focused on the low-hanging fruit, the people who are interested, the people who are invested in student affordability issues. Um, the other thing that I think about from my perspective is, so it's got to be kind of both grassroots and top-down. And so I'm involved with folks in our, um, our Center for Educational Innovation and our Academic Technology Support Services. And, um, and working with them, um, so they're kind of, that's kind of top down. It's, it's kind of coming from our provost office. So the provost is interested in how she can create innovation in the classroom, but also how can we streamline support to those faculty across different units on campus. So the, I'm working with those partners. So it gives us the chance to talk to faculty when they're making new decisions about redesigning a course or creating a new course, which are opportunity points where the libraries didn't have the opportunity previously to talk to faculty about content issues. 
And I will talk about open content, but I will talk about other content options as well, which was mentioned in many of the sessions mm -hmm. today, that libraries are looking at providing library license content, which still makes affordable solutions for students, but um, it's not necessarily open. So from a librarian perspective, I think about open as one possibility among many for meeting our goals of student affordability and streamlining um, service um, to faculty and access for students. So I would agree. I think especially when you're looking at open educational resources, the environment is overwhelming. It's like searching the web and getting um, you know, a million results and not knowing um, whether they're useful. So the Open Textbook Library, which Dave Ernst created at the University of Minnesota, is a key resource. We're adding faculty reviews. Um, we're focused on textbooks in particular, and I would go back to that informal survey that we did with our faculty. Over two-thirds of the faculty we got responses from still use, open, use textbooks of one form or another. Textbooks work for faculty, and textbooks make sense. We've had, I, the first library job that I had was almost 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, and I was teaching education students how to find open resources using Gopher, which was the text-based system. You know, so open educational resources have been around for 20 years, but we haven't seen the uptake, and why isn't that? Um, especially not in large research right. institutions. So I think textbooks is a good place to start if that's what works for faculty. They question the quality of open textbooks, so we're doing a lot of education about why these are quality, getting reviews of other, from other faculty. Um, so I think you know, you, there's a lot of pilot programs, and I think starting and seeing, you know, taking some of the examples of projects that people did at other institutions that we saw at the presentation today, and I think those might be recorded um, and be available later. And you know, seeing what makes sense to pilot and invest in doing that cost-benefit analysis, what makes sense for a small investment at your institution, um, trying it out, seeing if it resonates with faculty. A lot of this is also about storytelling, which is not my strength. I'm very analytical. But a lot of this is being able to come talk to students and get their story and have that, you know, and see where that resonates with faculty about the impact of the cost of textbooks and the impact of having an open textbook on their learning experience and the impact on faculty who have used that and how um, it makes their teaching experience better with their students. So it's like getting all of those stories together, those storylines, and conveying those effectively to faculty. So I think that in the U.S. and there's a number of drivers right now. So there's pressure on institutions to save students money. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the pressure is coming from an institutional level from presidents and provosts. Um, I think the libraries are, um, are and uh, um, I don't know what the word is that I want to use there, um, are a natural place for um, there to be support and service around this because libraries have always been interested in content issues. So the way that we've defined my involvement in e-learning at the University of Minnesota is that, and my, um, I have a co-lead and, and some other folks who also support me, is that we're content focused. And so that can mean many things. But so one of the reasons that I think libraries make sense for um, getting out the word and we're a natural place to focus on OER and open textbooks is because we're content focused and we've often been content focused. And I don't think of content necessarily just as the thing. Mm -hmm. There is the open educational resource or module or textbook, but we provide services and that's what libraries have always done. And so I think in order to make this happen, it's not just about the thing. It's the services, it's the development of awareness and understanding of open. I think that faculty are busy people, and so we have to provide the impetus and understanding of the cost for students today and why it's different than it used to be, um, and what open is and why that's important as a potential solution. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there can be any number of champions on campus, but I think the libraries are a natural place for there to be leadership, at least. Um, in the types of institutions that I've worked mm -hmm. with in my career. The, the, the impact here has been making education more affordable for our students, but the other impact is that um, it has enhanced teaching and learning from the results that we've seen in the studies that have been done so far. Okay. Not all students buy the textbooks if they're not freely available, and so that has an impact on the student's ability to have access to the content and do well and be academic successful in the courses here in the U.S. Um, so those are the two biggest impacts I think that we typically focus on when we're working with faculty.
person to ever go to college in my family. And the only reason I was able to go to college was because of scholarships. Um, and so, um, so part of my passion about this is making college affordable for our students here in the US. I have two sons who, you know, I'm in a different position than my parents were in in order to help me pay for college, but it'll probably still be difficult for me to put two boys through college. Um, and I'm in, I've been involved in academe for, I don't know, for years. Yeah. Like, you know, we're go, probably going on 20 years. Yeah. And so um, I think these are important issues. And librarians have always kind of been about service support um, and that and that kind of thing. And so I think it, it um, open access issues, we've been talking about open research for years, and open educational resources just make sense to us as well as librarians. I think, I think that in a lot of institutions, um, in, in a lot of libraries, the success has been based on hiring a particular individual. So the last session that we just saw here at Open Ed had three different OER librarians who had been hired within the last year or two at their institutions. I've been in my role for about two years. My title isn't OER librarian, but I'm e-learning librarian, and that is an aspect of my job. So I think in order to have the long-term success that we want, having somebody who can focus on that, um, they cannot be the only person in a large institution like mine who does this work. I have to reach back through the liaison network, the subject specialists that we have in our institution, um, and help them understand what their future role might be. And that's something that we're working on right now. We've had to take a couple of years and figure out what that might be and where the opportunity spaces might be on our campus to involve them. Um, and build that outward facing piece and now we're going to be doing the reach back in to figure out how we scale that. So, um, so it depends on the size of your institution. I think Sarah Cohen is an AUL at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and she's been closely involved but they're a smaller institution than my institution. So um, I think it depends on your institution, the size and where you think that role is appropriate. Like again, I think um, you kind of have to custom build your support for OER in your library based on your user needs and your organizational structure. And that's kind of what I see various institutions doing. So I think there's any number, so I don't think everybody has to go out and hire um, an OER librarian. I think there's any number of small things that you can do. So my colleagues at Cal Poly did some things like they got print copies of the OpenStax books um, and they put them out in their library for students to use as study resources and advertise them as open educational resources. Um, so I think those are small things. You can bring open educational resources into your library, make sure that people know that they're open. Um, you can do small programs that um, raise awareness about open, edu you know, what open is and why it's important. Um, I, you know, we have kind of a curriculum that we've developed in terms of training faculty um, uh, about what open is and it, it may not apply in Finland because of the cost of education being our space has been focused on um, programs um, for a long time and um, so I mean there are still quiet spaces but it's not all quiet and so and, and I don't know like when I think of open educational resources I feel I feel like a lot of the work that we do is going out to faculty so it's not about the space in the library and I know some folks have done some marketing of open educational resources within their libraries that is not a tact that we have taken to date so um, so I can't think of, I mean, I think um, the technology infrastructure issues and some of the service support issues like editori or, um, be editing materials if somebody wants to publish them, those are the things that seem, so those are more infrastructure but on a technical side or a service side um, that I have seen raised in a number of places in the work that we've been doing. but my understanding if, from the mm -hmm. folks who are doing research in that area and publishing in that area that the results stay at least the same in terms of positive mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. learning outcomes or are higher. And I would expect that as we, um, as people continue to do that research, we will continue to see similar results, mm -hmm. I would guess. In order to understand needs, we've done a number of things. So two years ago when I first started this job, we did a, a small but informal survey of faculty on campus related to content. And we had each of our liaisons contact two individuals. It was a fairly small pool, 
but the data was really interesting about what kind of content they're using on the classroom, how they perceive content, different things like that. So we did a small survey. I think there's any number of publications out there now. So everybody's talking about the recent Babson survey um, results that came out. Um, so there's publications now out there with regards to how faculty view e OER and, and those kinds of things that can inform um, you know, maybe a follow-up local survey and conversation. Um, and I think the other thing you know, that I've been doing is that relationship building, not necessarily directly with faculty, but with other people who work with faculty on campus. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, like, I think you have to customize how you approach understanding those needs on your campus and what makes sense to you. Um, some of it may not just be the faculty needs, it might be what the administration thinks the faculty need. And so it's like, how do you bring those two things together? Um, so there's a lot of anecdotal evidence, you know, by com having conversations with the liaisons and finding out what they're hearing about the content needs on campus. Um, I think in libraries we do a lot of gathering of anecdotal evidence. Um, I don't know if that's yeah. always yeah. the most rigorous approach, mm -hmm. but it is often the approach that we use in libraries.